ever wanted to hear from a cybersecurity postgraduate program grad, today I'll be interviewing Sal Selly, who is a client solutions director at Dell. And here's a little bit from our call. You know, I've been in the tech industry for over 35 years. Wow. And uh, yeah, so I'm uh, always on the business side and the consulting side. I was with Oracle for eight uh, and then been at Dell for six. And in between, I was uh, vice president of sales for some consulting firms. Gotcha. Uh, so, you know, I've uh, been involved with cybersecurity for quite a while. And it's a very interesting area, a great um, dynamic field, constantly changing. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the work I do is... Uh, you know, consulting organizations to as to how they can protect their critical infrastructure from attacks and ransomware, and um, you know, and uh, that's why I came across that course with Simply Learn, and I, I I took that, and it was very helpful. And then I actually followed it up with another program from uh, Stanford, so that was a postgraduate program in cybersecurity. So definitely a keen area of interest for me, and. Uh, and continuing to uh, invest time and effort to brush up and keep abreast of what's happening. I'd love to hear a little bit about your current role. What do you do on a day-to-day -day basis and maybe even a yeah. little bit of how you got there? Sure. So I'm a, a client solutions director at Dell. And uh, what that means is I run and lead uh, the consulting and services business for Dell. And I work with a lot of corporate clients and large customers, not only data center security, but also client devices, because the attack surface has considerably expanded. It's no longer, you know, securing the perimeter. A large number of attacks happen from the inside so, or from endpoint devices or the network or the edge devices. So given that and you know all the headlines that have come out in the in the press different companies being attacked the question is not if you're going to be attacked but when on a day to day basis i'm working with cios chief information security officers officers vps of it directors of it to figure out how we can help them protect their key data and how can we help them secure it and there are lots of components to that. But what I find exciting about my role, and I've been uh, at Dell for almost six years doing this, is that every customer situation is different. Mm -hmm. uh, there are different drivers. There are different forces that are making the client look at a solution. So part of my role is understanding what is, why are they trying to do what they are trying to do? and then seeing if we can help them achieve it. So it's really interesting. How I got here is, given my background in technology, I was actually working with Infor, and I was managing Dell as an account. This was uh, about six, seven years ago. And I helped spin off some of the Dell services business to NTT with Deloitte. And I was very impressed with the folks that I was interviewing and talking to at Dell. And I said, this is a company I'd like to join. And I did. And then I continue to grow and develop. And um, it's a good place. It's a good place to be in, right? But you got to know your stuff, right? Because mm -hmm. people people are pulling you in as the specialist, as the subject matter expert. So you got to do your homework. You got to have the background. You got to be able to speak the business language and the technology. And right. uh, that's a unique combination and an interesting skill set that not everybody has. So the cybersecurity side is very exciting, right? Mm -hmm. And the whole concept is how does a company protect its critical assets when it comes to data, right? And if there was an attack, how can they recover from the attack quickly? And the concept is it's the NIST security framework, right? So how do you detect identify, protect, and recover. So uh, the whole concept is the three I's. Isolate the data, make it immutable, which means you cannot change it, and third, run intelligence on it to detect a attack before it happens, right? So it's about sequestering the data. So you have your production environment, 
So you move it from the production environment to a vault. We have the concept of a vault, like you have a physical vault. This is a digital vault where the data is moved into the vault and it's separated from the primary data center. So if there is an attack, it doesn't get transferred to the vault. And then you run intelligence on the vault and then you make sure that the data in the vault is clean and then you recover and you restore from the vault back to the production site in the case of a failure. So that's just high level how we structure that. And that takes care of the data center attack. On the end user client devices, you protect the client device, you protect the data on the device. And then you run analytics and you've read about all the phishing attacks and all the emails that you get and all the spamware and all that. So a lot of it is human psychology and training the end user not to click on stuff that mm -hmm. doesn't look genuine, right? You can have the best technology in the world, but if the if the user is not trained- Always the user. <laughs> yeah, it, it boils down to the psychology of the user, right? So for those of you who are looking to get started in a career in cybersecurity, I'd recommend checking out the Simply Learn Postgraduate Program in Cybersecurity. The Simply Learn Postgraduate Program in Cybersecurity is one of the world's top cybersecurity programs with an average of 100 plus enrollments in every batch. Simply Learn has built the program in collaboration with MIT, Schwarzman College of Computing, and EC Council. This postgraduate program in cybersecurity is designed to equip you with the skills required to become an expert in the rapidly growing field of cybersecurity, and the program duration is for six months. It was also chosen as the the best cybersecurity program in 2022 by Course Report. And I think one of the most important things to call out here is cybersecurity industry trends. Based on cyber ventures, by 2026, there will be 3.5 million unfilled cybersecurity jobs internationally with 700,000 available job roles today and the average annual salary of about $100,000 per year. This is also one of the reasons why I think cybersecurity is such a good career to go into, especially because joining a program like this will be able to help you kickstart your career in just a few months where you can come in as a complete beginner and leave with a completed certification with the real hands-on experience, learning foundational cybersecurity concepts, working on hands-on projects, and have a much higher learning potential than most roles in and outside of tech as an entry-level beginner. They also have various different learner reviews listed on their platform with roles in security architecture and tech consulting. There's no prior experience required to enroll in this course and any graduate can enroll in this program. The program leverages MIT's academic excellence in cybersecurity and provides a comprehensive understanding of the field with various different courses featuring modules from the MIT Schwarzman College of Computing and EC Council, as well as master classes from MIT faculty. You'll have a chance to work on 25 hands-on projects, as well as have access to modules from EC Council and have access to CEH learning material. The top alumni from Simply Learn's postgraduate program in cybersecurity include Google, Amazon, Microsoft, IBM, LinkedIn, JP Morgan. At the end of this program, you'll also receive an EC Council learning kit and exam voucher, as well as six months free access to the CHI labs, plus 25 hacking challenges from the EC Council that'll give you really good experience as someone who is just getting started in cybersecurity. Fields covered include ethical hacking, risk management, advanced hacking concepts, as well as mobile and web technologies. You can check out their admissions process or you can pay via monthly installments with various payment options with low APR and no hidden fees for as low as $264 a month. You can fill in your details to learn more about the program and speak directly with one of their career counselors to learn more about their admissions process and the program itself. So if you guys are interested in checking out the Simply Learn postgraduate program in cybersecurity, you can use my code SANDRA10 for 10% off. You can also learn more about the program itself linked in my description below. Thank you to Simply Learn for sponsoring today's video and let's get back to the rest of the topics. So when you first started in your career, were you always in the cybersecurity space or did you kind of pivot as you went along? Yeah, no, I was not always in the cybersecurity space. I was in the technology space. So uh, when I was at Oracle, I was looking after the databases. So my background uh, started gotcha. there, right? In terms of storage and how, how does the company, where does it put the critical data and how does the data continue to grow? And then I got into middleware, which is integration technologies because you have all these different applications. So how do you make sure that the applications are integrated and they communicate with each other? And then I got into the consulting side of things where you have to make everything work and services. So it was a gradual progression, but over the years, you know, I've always been keenly interested in security because as you may know, Oracle database is known for security. I was always interested in how do companies protect the data and how can hardware and software vendors 
engineer their systems from the factory to protect the data so that the customer doesn't have to do it. Right. And then I started working with companies that were asking us about security. And I felt that I needed to sharpen my knowledge and get much more uh, academically and technically savvy. And that's when I started looking at programs that are out there. You know, you got to keep on investing in yourself. I firmly believe that when you invest in yourself, that's the best investment you can make. Yeah, I completely agree. That's also kind of how I came from a software engineering role into cybersecurity. It was something that was interesting, but also I could see that there was a big need for this in the future, especially, you know, in the next decade or two, it's going to be a very big uh, topic, Mm -hmm. even with generative AI. So I'm excited to see a bit more of the future of cybersecurity, I guess you could say. Absolutely. Yes. Program, it was, yeah. it was challenging, no doubt. It was a lot of work. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it was a six-month intensive program. Definitely had a lot of technical requirements, some uh, programming, uh, some project work. But, yeah. you know, at the end of the day, you got to put in the time and the effort to really get some value out of it. Otherwise, don't do it. And that's why I yeah. said that in my video too, which I did. Is it, it? Does it take work? Yes. Is it worth it? Absolutely. Would I recommend people to do it? Most definitely. But it's not a walk in the park, right? Uh, so if somebody is thinking that they can just breeze through it and not have to do the assignments and not have to do the projects and not have to do the work, they're mistaken. You have to put in the work. And that's quite frankly, when you'll get the value from it too. So, right. right. No, no, no pain, no gain. Right. So that's, that's my, my philosophy. So did you complete the program while you're working full time? Was this something oh, yeah. you did on the side? Oh, wow. No, no, okay. I've been working full time. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds like a heavy workload. So. Yeah, but I'm used to it. You know, uh, I do. I, I I put in quite a bit of work because I'm of the firm opinion that you get out of life what you put into it, right? Maybe a little bit more about the background from your early career and how you got to where you are today. I know you said you jumped from Oracle to a few companies and then you eventually made it to Dell. I mean, these are mm-hmm. two very big companies. I'm sure many people yeah. would love to work for. So how did you kind of get into that space? Starting from yeah. the beginning. Yeah, so starting from the beginning, you know, uh, I was always interested in sales, right? Okay. And, and and I got into service sales, not product sales. I always liked the idea where you're in a role where you get rewarded for your performance. So if you do a lot, then you make a lot. And if you do less, then you make less. I wasn't ever a fan of well, no matter how much you do, you still get the same. So that right. was why I loved sales right from the beginning. And the other thing is you got to put the customer first and you got to try to solve the customer's problem mm-hmm. rather than try to push or sell your own product. If you have that mindset, then you will always be successful. So. I started off my career, I was working for, uh, in actually in, in Canada, and then I immigrated from India. It just so happened, uh, you know, I was selling uh, very technical-oriented training for power generation companies. That company got acquired by a technology company in Austin. One day, I got a call from the CEO of the company in Austin. You know, he introduced himself and he said, look, uh, uh-huh. we we see you're doing some amazing work in Canada. Would you be open to coming and doing it for us in, all, in the U.S.? So I said, okay, yeah, I'm open to it. Just like, you know, when somebody told me, hey, are you open to doing a video on <laughs> YouTube or whatever? Yeah. So that's, that's, another, that's another thing. I would always encourage people, keep an open mind. You never know what life is going to throw to you. If you, if you close the door, nothing will happen, right? That's At true. least if you keep the door open, something good may happen right that's true so 
So that's been my mindset. And then yeah, that led to more things. And I joined Oracle, then moved to Boston. We went to Bangalore, to India for three and a half years, where I set up a whole sales organization for Oracle. Went to Chicago, then joined a firm there. The key thing is, Sandra, if you're good at what you do, you'll get tapped on the shoulder. And people will want you to join them. Always try to do very well in whatever you're doing, right? And then, uh, you know, I got headhunted to join another consulting firm as vice president of sales. And uh, I'm very open to new things and new people, right? I have about 25,000 followers on LinkedIn. I'm very active. Wow, you're a celebrity. Well, no, I wouldn't Basically. say that. But, <laughs> yeah, I have a podcast channel. I have a youtube video channel which focuses on human potential uh so you know i'm i'd like to be balanced too right the balance is important some people get really stressed and they get very anxious and they get under a lot of pressure and they forget to relax right, and that's right. that's important you gotta relax so that's how I, I got into it. And then, you know, one thing led to the other and got into this uh, with oracle i was there for eight years it was a great ride but you know, I got headhunted and uh, this company asked me to join them as vice president of sales. And it was a great opportunity. I built up the team. And so if I look back into my career, I've taken opportunities, uh, mm -hmm. which maybe other people may not have taken. So what do you think was the biggest differentiator or the biggest advantage in your career? The biggest advantage is willing to do more than what is required for the job. Mm -hmm. Give more than you take, right? And what do I mean by that? I mean, go above and beyond. Take on the difficult assignment that nobody wants to. Take on the difficult customer that people shy away from. Invest more. Did I have to do two more programs after I've done two master's degrees? No, I didn't have to. Yeah. But I, I did it because I wanted to get better. I wanted to improve. I wanted to to know my stuff, right? And add value to the customer and the calls and the meetings that I'm on. So what do you think about all the generative AI stuff that's happening with it's how that's going to impact cybersecurity? Yeah. It's, it's going to make it much more sophisticated. I think the whole AI with chat GPT and long AI is just going to make things a lot better. And some people are scared, right? Because yeah. You see a lot of they that. They feel that their jobs are going to go, and, and they may. But that's why you got to continue to skill yourself and reskill yourself. So the lesson from this call is really about continuous learning and continuing to keep bettering yourself. Keep bettering yeah. yourself. The best investment you can make is in reskilling and continuing to upskill yourself. Mm -hmm.